When I went to Jamaica at the beginning of 2022, I came back feeling as if I had unfinished business. I had to fulfill a dream one didn't realize at the time. I was back in the summer of 2022 and I came back uh, with more unfinished business. See, while I was there, there were things that I wanted to do but didn't or couldn't get done. But then there are things that I did, but the results did not, <laughs> did not um, fully manifest the way I'd hoped. In some aspects, I had great, intention, great intentions, but awful results. Again, great intentions, but awful results. I think I did a message in a similar vein. And a part of those things where I had great intentions but awful results is ultimately realizing that I knew this before, but I'm not God. I'm not Jesus. Because there are times when we're trying to solve certain things and the solution isn't, for example, money. Scripturally, in Ecclesiastes 10 verse 19, it is written, A feast is made for laughter, and wine maketh merry, but money answereth all things. And some may make it seem as if all you need to do is just like, give money, and that will take care of everything. But for example, if you give money, and don't, in a manner of speaking, give Jesus, how much good is money truly going to do? Because also with money, sometimes we can put so much emphasis on money, that we think that by giving money, then we've solved the problem. Even relationships, like a marriage, sometimes, a, I'll just say, sometimes a man is messing up and he thinks that by giving his wife flowers or certain gifts, then by spending money, it takes care of the issues. Money can do a lot, but it can't do everything. We also have to be careful that we don't deify money. Because the Lord Jesus Christ in Matthew 6 verse 24 said, no one can serve two masters, for either he will hate the one and love the other, or else he will hold on the one and despise the other. Ye cannot serve God and mammon. Mammon is a lowercase g-o-d over earthly pleasures, things such as money. So we have to be careful of not putting too much emphasis on money. It can take you a lot of things, but sometimes you may find, and I call this pouring into an empty cup or pouring into a cup with a hole. If you're pouring into a cup with a hole, you can give a lot and don't see the expected fruit of your labor. And like, what's going on? Because everything you're pouring in is just going right back out. You may not go out at the same rate that you're pouring it in but it's not being fully retained and it ends up becoming a loss. And you know what's worse than trying to help and the person or the group remains in the same position is when you try to help and the person or group actually becomes worse. In John 12 verses 1 through 8, we get this lesson, for example, trying to solve poverty. Then Jesus, six days before the Passover, came to Bethany, where Lazarus was, which had been dead. When he raised, when he was, correction, whom he raised from the dead. There they made him a supper, and Martha served, but Lazarus was one of them that sat at the table with him. Then took Mary a pound of ointment of spikenard, very costly, and anointed the feet of Jesus, and wiped his feet with her hair. And the house was filled with the odor of the ointment. Then saith one of his disciples, Judas Iscariot, Simon's son, which should betray him, why was not this ointment sold 
for 300 pence and given to the poor. Doesn't that sound great? Why wasn't the ointment sold for 300 pence and the money given to the poor? This he said, not that he cared for the poor, but because he was a thief and had the bag and bear what was put therein. So it's almost like, um, you should have sold that money or you should have sold that ointment and give the money to Jesus, if you will. And Judas was, would have kept the funds and then he could take some off the top. But what he said sounded good about the stuff being given to the poor. So despite who said it, the money being given to the poor sounds like a great idea. Then said Jesus, let her alone. Against the day of my burying hath she kept this. For the poor always ye have with you, but me ye have not always. And not that Jamaica is the only place that it happens, but I saw a lot of poverty in Jamaica. And there are many people out of love to have given to, but I couldn't have. And if I'd given everything that I had to everyone I came across in Jamaica, arguably, all of those individuals will still be in the same position after I left. The Lord also told a story of Lazarus and a rich man. How the rich man died and went to hell. And Lazarus died and went into paradise. So even though the Lazarus was poor, could barely get ahead, in the end, he was the one who became rich because he has had eternal life. And sometimes we're trying to solve issues, but the solution we're trying to provide is temporary. It's like Band-Aid. So Lazarus, even though he died in such a horrible position, such a horrible condition, in the end, he ended up better than a rich man. So everything can be solved with money. But everything can be solved with Jesus. In Proverbs 13 verse 22 it is written, A good man leaveth an inheritance to his children's children, and the wealth of the sinner is laid up for the just. A good man leaves an inheritance for his children's children. A lot of times we look at a good person in that aspect, leaving an inheritance of money for his children. But I argue that a good man leaves an inheritance of raising up children in the fear and the admonition of the Lord. While in Jamaica, I was able to attend a memorial service for a young lady, even though she was older than me, for a young lady that I knew. They also did something for her father. I knew him too. I grew up knowing him as a deacon, but he eventually became a pastor. And he has children and grandchildren who are involved in the church. And I won't get into the thing about being in church versus being in Christ. But this man passed away. And at least you could say he introduced his children and his grandchildren to Jesus the Christ. So in a lot of ways, it doesn't matter how much money he left, but he left them with the knowledge of the Lord Jesus Christ. Sometimes we're trying to solve problems using the wrong thing. And we're trying to solve problems with everything but Jesus Christ. And as this message came up um, last night, and while Peter, saw the man and saying that silver and gold have I not and about in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ get up and walk he couldn't give him money 
but he gave him something else. The only Savior that we have in this world is the Lord Jesus Christ. The only answers to the world's problems is the Lord Jesus Christ. And as you are doing the work of an evangelist, whether it's privately or publicly, remember that ultimately, the one you're trying to lead another person to, or a group to, is not to money, is not to a church, but to the Lord Jesus Christ himself. He and he alone can save. He and he alone can help us through a life that can be absolutely miserable, yet will be worth it in the end because of him. So in all things, place the focus, the emphasis on where it belongs, the Lord Jesus Christ. And when it comes to the poor, for example, you may not be able to give them any money. You may be able to pray for them. <laughs> As I say that, I remember um, a man came up to me in Jamaica and he said something. I was like, is this guy trying to scam me? So I asked him a question. And in Patwa he said, um, because I look like one of God picked me. Saying that I look like one of God's children. See, sometimes we think that we are going to give to the poor, but they end up giving to us. Because I also remember one day I was on my way to a church. And I had something in hand, had something in mind to give to the church. And on the way to the church, I saw a man instead. And what I had, I gave to him. And when he said, God bless you, I'm like, my gosh. He may not have had a roof over his head, but he had the Lord Jesus Christ in his heart. And there's also this, but be careful of how you entertain strangers, because many have entertained angels unaware. So ultimately, what you should have to offer is the Lord Jesus Christ. And sometimes the poor, they don't want or need your money. They may want or need the Lord Jesus Christ. And sometimes they'll remind you that even in their poverty, that they still love the Lord. Not because of what he gives, but because of who he is. I pray this must have been a blessing to you. God bless you. And Jesus Christ is Lord.